Well, the United Auto Workers strike is now entering day four, and talks are set to continue with one of the big three automakers a little bit later on today. Yeah, that follows an unproductive weekend of negotiations, and now the impacts of the strike are beginning to be felt by those who haven't walked off the job. ABC's Justin Finch explains. <laughs> This morning, nearly 13,000 auto workers are returning to the picket line. The United Auto Workers Union pressing ahead with this first ever simultaneous strike against Detroit's big three automakers. We're prepared to do whatever we have to do, so the membership is ready. The UAW says it held negotiations with General Motors and Ford over the weekend, reporting reasonably productive conversations with Ford. Chrysler and Jeep parent company Stellantis says its raise is hourly wage offer by nearly 21%. No more tears. But still not enough for the UAW, which is demanding that the big three revive worker pensions, better retiree benefits, cost of living adjustments, and a 40% pay increase. They can barely make it. They deserve a living wage, and they need to be brought up to what we make. The automakers call the union's demands too costly as it takes on the added expense of building electric vehicles. The strike spurring reaction from Republicans and Democrats. I'm somebody that believes in free enterprise. I think, I think those are decisions that can be made by, by shareholders and creating pressure. If you work hard and play by the rules, you should be able to provide a comfortable living for yourself for your family. Now at least two automakers announcing temporary layoffs for non-striking workers, some 2,000 at GM and some 600 at Ford. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. UAW President Fain is slamming those auto worker cuts. He says that the companies don't have to lay off a single employee, could double every worker's pay and not raise auto prices while still making billions. The auto company CEOs have not publicly responded yet.